All right, in the last video, I gave you a real quick overview of uh, Google Docs. So Google Docs, as I mentioned, is a word processing program that you can use with Google Drive. Uh, so Google Docs, you would create your documents, uh, word processing documents, very similar to Word, but it stores directly back into Google Drive. So on the, in this video, I want to give you a little more detail in how to use Google Docs, some of the features. In the last video, I went through the menus up here at the top, and I uh, also went through the toolbar right here. In this video, I want you to notice this toolbar here um, is, uh, you can't see the whole thing because I've kind of zoomed in to make it a little clearer in the video, but there's a more button and you'll see that a lot with different apps, but there's a more button. You can click on that and you can see the, the a remainder of the toolbar. So you'll see that from time to time. So let's just say I'm creating a little document called bucket list. So I've typed in the word bucket list. The first thing I want you to notice though is the toolbar here, the menu up here at the top, and also this ruler right here. This ruler will tell you, let me click this button to get rid of that. This ruler will tell you where you are on the paper. Um, and paper is not always that important when you are creating documents because we don't always print it out. But this is how it would look. We'll talk about this of the margins right here. We'll talk about that later and how to change your margins. And this shows you how many inches uh, you are across on the paper. And there also there's a ruler here on the left-hand side that you can see down at the bottom. This is the margin down at the bottom. And this is where we would put a footer. And at the top, this would be the, the header section. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. But to get started here, I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of how to do certain things. The first thing you're going to want to do is start typing some things in. So I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to say uh, this is um, a list of things I would like to someday do. I don't think I should end my my phrases with a preposition. But anyway, uh, obviously we can correct the um, grammar here or the spelling. And that's really handy. Most all word processors do that. Now, let's just say we wanted to align some of this. For example, bucket list. I want to take this line and I want to um, center it. So I can go here to this button, the align button, and I can center it. And notice whatever I've got selected, whatever paragraph I've got selected will be centered. I can also right align it and put it to the right if I want to. And then there's this thing called justify, which is a little hard to understand with one with one document, I mean, with one paragraph. But if I had a longer paragraph, I'm just gonna make this a little bit longer paragraph right here. And let's just say there's a bunch of words in here. If I wanted to justify this, click justify. Notice the words are spaced out so that it's lined up on this side. You can't really tell it here. Let me add a little more here. But it's also lined up on the right hand side. You see how that's a smooth margin on both sides? Do you see how right here the, the margin is smooth and right here the margin is, is smooth as well? That's justified. But if I did uh if I did um right align, notice these are all ragged here. If I did left align, these are all lined up smoothly here. So that's how you would uh align a paragraph. Um and so we could do, for example, let's go back and center this one and we'll leave it like that. All right. So let's also talk a little bit about fonts. So we can do, for example, we can take bucket list and we can make that bigger. We can change the font type. Uh, we can also change this here. This is this is very handy if you wanted this to just be a, a title. Uh, it'll change it to what they call title text, and you can change the styles at another time. But for now, let's just uh, let's just worry about it being using using the font rather than that. Um, we can also come in here and we can change the the font uh, type, like bold, italic, and underline. We can also change the text color. For example, I can make this red. And if I click off of it, you can see it a little better. I can also come in here and I can change the highlight color. This is the background color. So I'll make this a light blue. So you can do that. Um, another thing you can do while we're talking about formatting, if I don't like the formatting, I can come down to here and I can remove the formatting. So this is really handy. I'm going to just click this and notice it's got no formatting. Uh, it didn't change the font size, but it did change other things related to that. I'm going to undo that because I like that formatting. And I want to show you something you can do. There's this thing called the, um, the paint format. You can use this to paint this format someplace else. So what we want to do here is let's say I wanted to, to have another paragraph here that I wanted to say... Um, um, uh, uh, first steps. I want this to be kind of a title. First 
steps for my bucket list. And so, and let's say I've got another paragraph down here that I'm typing. Let's say I wanted this to have the same format as this. Well, I could uh, come down here, highlight it, and change the format. But what I could do instead is click this paint format. And, I, and so right now I have to be on this particular item. And then think of that like a paint bucket. This is my paint bucket, and it's red, and it's a certain font, it's Arial, and so forth. This is my paint bucket. I've got the brush in there. By clicking on it, I've got the brush in there. And I go up here, and I go to uh, the paint format. And now, notice it's the button is held down. And now I can highlight first steps, or just steps if I wanted to. And notice it is painted with the same exact format we had here. I'm going to undo that because I want to show you another thing you can do with that. If I want to take the same format and apply it in multiple places, I, again, I have to I have to click first of all in the paint bucket. This is what I want to uh, the, the this is what I want it to look like. Whatever I have right here in bucket list, so I click here, and then again I go back to paint format. But this time I'm going to double click this. So if I do this, I can highlight something, and notice it says first step. But notice I've still got the paint. Uh, and also, this is still um, the button is held down. So now I can take something else and I can format it the same way. Do you see what I'm doing this? See how I'm doing this? So it's painting that format. And to, un to make it stop painting, you have to click the button again. I'm going to just undo all those because I really don't need those all done that way. I will go ahead and do this with first steps so that it looks the same as that. So that's a handy way of, um, of, of applying a format to multiple things. All right, so actually I'm gonna delete this first steps. I don't like this. I'm gonna delete all these things. Uh, uh, but I will I will say, let's, let's just say we want to make a list of things that we'd like to do, someday do. So a, a number of things we can do. Uh, we could make a numbered list or a bulleted list. Do you see that? There's numbered list or bulleted list. So if I want it, I want it to be numbers, I can just click on a numbered list. Notice it gives me number one. And let's say I wanted to visit Paris once in my life. Now, when I press enter, notice it gives me item number two. So if, if I'm on item number two, let's say I want to um, do a bungee jump or something like that. That might be uh, item number two. If I press enter again, it's going to give me uh, item number three. Now, to stop numbering, I need to I can press enter one more time on a blank line, or I could click the button right here. But I'm just going to press enter, and notice it's no longer a numbered list. Okay, so I can move down, and I can I can add I can add other things to my document. Okay, now um, I'm going to change that to a right click on there and choose visit visit Paris. So these are things that I might want to do. Um, so that's how you would make a, a numbered list. You can also change this. I'm going to I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to change it to a bulleted list. So a bulleted list doesn't have numbers, but it has bullets like this. So I can do that. Let me show you something else. I can also if I come down here and I add an item to it by going to the end of that line, maybe I could say I want a bungee jump in several places. So, for example, I want a bungee jump in the um, uh, in the Grand Canyon. Maybe I know a space there. So, uh, and I also want to bungee jump in uh, off a bridge in New York City or something like that. So maybe I want to do. I want those to be a subcategory of uh, bungee jump. So what I can do is I can take both of these and I can indent that. Look, when I click here, increase indent. Do you see what it does? It makes it a subcategory underneath this bungee jump. Now, in order to get it back, if I press enter at the end of this. But I don't want to. I don't want this to be a part of bungee jump. I want it to be another item here. I'll have to um, decrease the indent. Do you see this? Decrease the indent, and then I'm back to here. So another thing on my list might be to visit um, visit uh, Canada. So I can I can click on any one of these, and I can increase or decrease uh, the paragraph. Does that make sense? I can do that up here as well if I want to like increase this paragraph and move it over. You see how it indented? If you look on the if you look on the uh, ruler, you can see that it's been indented at the top. Okay, so those are bulleted list or numbered list, and we already talked about fonts and the paint format and centering. Let me uh, show you something you were supposed to do in the, one of your assignments. I'm going to insert, and you can insert lots of things. I'm just going to insert a horizontal line, and that's just kind of a cool thing to put in there is a horizontal line. Um, 
Also, let's talk about footers. Uh, down at the bottom, there is a, uh, a, if you go down to the bottom, you'll see the, the uh, ruler is here. If I want to insert something that'll appear on every page, I can double click down here and now it'll be uh, up here at the bottom of every page. So if I wanted to put um, just like bucket list at the bottom, spell bucket list. Um, and, you know, I could, I could, uh, there are some options I have here. I can add page numbers if I want to, for example. And I could say, do I want the page number to appear on the first page or not? Do I want it to appear in the header or the footer? This is the footer. And do I want to start at page one? So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And um, notice it's got a page number there. Now I might want to um, move that over. And so I can do that. Uh, you know, again, I can justify it if I want to by changing this so that it aligns to the right. You see how that works? Um, but that's in the uh, in the footer. To get out of the footer, I can go just click anywhere back in my document. But notice if I had multiple pages, this would change to page two, page three, page four, depending on the page. So, and that's in the footer. To edit the footer, I can double click again down here in the bottom. Well, let me get back here. And I'm back in the footer. You can do the same thing with a header. A header would be, you could just double click up here. And a header would be something that um, appears on every page. Okay, so that's a header. And that's a footer and how to do those things. Um, let's see. I'm going to um, talk about how to insert links. Okay. So let's say I wanted to visit Paris and I want to make this a link to uh, a web page about Paris. Well, I just happen to have found a web page, this Wikipedia website. So I want to make this a link so that a person opens this document or when I open this document, it'll click on on. Uh, I can click on this. So I can go here and I can insert a link right here. OK, now, uh, one cool thing about this, this is Google, right? This is Google Docs. Um, so it'll actually do a search for you using the word that you've got highlighted. So if I wanted to do a search here, I could I could it was doing it right there inside the document. That's kind of cool. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is find my own link. So I want to highlight this because I want the word Paris to be the link. And I happen to already have a link, a, a, a page open here a web page, then I want this to be my link. So I'm going to copy this. You see, I want, it's a Wikipedia page about Paris. Now I'm going to go back to the bucket list that I was working with. You see, I moved back to this tab and I'm going to click on the link button here. And um, so the this I'm going to paste the link right here. I've already told the computer what the link will be, uh, what will form the link. The word Paris, will, the person will click on that and it will go to this web page. So I'm going to click apply. And you see how I did that. And now if I click on this, I can then click on this and it will take me to that web page. So this is a very handy thing to do. Um, let's say I wanted to do Canada. Um, and so um, and I, I could, one thing I could do, let's do a, um, a Canadian web page. I'm going to find Canada. I want to show you something kind of cool. Canada, let's say um, I just do a search for Canada and I came up with uh, Canada's homepage. Okay, how about that? And so let's just say I copy this. I'm going to copy that directly into my bucket list right here. So I'm going to do control V or I'm going to right click and choose paste, right? And there my link is. Well, that's 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 one of those nasty looking links. It's it's not great because it um it's got HTTPS, www. I want it to be nice and clean, like the Paris link I have up here. Well, I can this is a cool new thing they've got in Google Docs right now. I can click here and look, it'll tell me, do I want to replace the URL, that's the web address, with its title? And I can say, yeah, I do. And now look. It's now that's the title of the web page that I was visiting uh, that that would form this link. So that's a cool thing you can do as well. You can um, you can also create links, for example, to other web pages. If you wanted to create a link to a different web page, uh, let's say I had um, um, uh, this summer travel that I was looking at earlier, and let's say I had this link right here. I can choose copy. I'm going to go back. And I might have uh, in my document here, I might say, see also the summer travel folder. OK, and so if I want to, I can paste this in here. Well, that's a, another nasty looking link, but it's a link to a, a, a folder, right? I can click on it and this is really cool. I can again uh, replace the link of the URL with its title. So watch instead of this ugly looking link like this, I'll just say yes. And look, and now it says summer travel. And I could say, 
see also, comma, the summer travel folder, something like that. All right, so we've discussed how to create links. Let's talk about how we might uh, insert uh, pictures. Uh, so I can go up here to insert and I can pick, I can um, find a picture. I can actually uh, um, look on Drive. I can upload it from my computer. I can search the web. I can go to my Google Drive. I can go to Google Photos. Um, if you're an Android user, your photos are probably uploaded automatically to Google Photos. I can search uh, by URL, or I can even use my camera to get those pictures. I'm just going to search the web for a moment, and I'm going to search for, um, I don't know, how about Paris? And so here's a picture of Paris. I'm going to, here's the Eiffel Tower. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to insert it. And here is the Eiffel Tower in my, in my document. Well, I need to be able to resize this. So I click on it and these little handles, they're called fill, F-I-L-L -L handles. I can um, resize these with these handles. I'm sorry, this is not a fill handle. This, I don't know what it's called, I forget, but it's a resizing handle. So I can resize. I can also notice this. I can uh, use this right here to, to turn it sideways if I wanted to. I'm gonna undo that, Control Z. One thing I want you to notice, I can also move this around. So I can just drag it around. But when you do drag it around, look what happens. This picture, I'm going to make it a little smaller so you can see it a little better. This picture is right now in this line right here. It's in this line. And so it makes it look like there's a big space here, but there's really, and it's really because the picture is so tall and this particular line um, is pretty short. So it puts it, it may, it's in line or in this line. Well, sometimes we don't want it to be in the line. We want it to, we want the, the lines to wrap around our picture. So you can wrap your picture in different ways. Uh, in front of the text, you can wrap it, uh, you can break the text. We want to just, I'm going to just wrap it so the picture would be to the left. You see that? And the, it'll wrap around it. Um, well, did that not put that on the left? I'm not sure where it's, oh, because, well, anyway, I notice it's now wrapping. That's the main thing. I can make it wrap around. Uh, I can tell it to move with the text or not move with the text and it will stay a particular place on the page. So that's how I would wrap my picture or, or the text around my picture. Um, and so you can play around with sizing your picture and then moving your picture and wrapping the text around your picture. Um, so that's how you would insert a picture, resize the picture, but also then wrap the text around the picture. Um, Let's see, what else do we need to cover? I talked about indenting paragraphs. Let's talk about spacing. So right now, um, my document spacing, if you go here, um, my document spacing is 1.5 or this document, this, um, this I should say this paragraph is 1.5. I can change it to single spacing. Do you know how to notice how it, um, it tightened up a little bit or I can make it double spacing. You see how it applied to this particular paragraph because I'm in that paragraph. Okay, I can highlight multiple paragraphs and do the same thing if I wanted it to apply to multiple paragraphs. Also, I can add space before or after a paragraph. Sometimes this can, um, the, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come down here and I'll show you. A paragraph, by the way, is wherever you press enter. So if I said, hello, and I said, goodbye, I actually have two paragraphs here. If I press enter after, after hello and goodbye, this is one paragraph, this is another paragraph. So when you're looking at paragraphs, um, it's important to know that the computer thinks these are, are separate paragraphs. This would be one paragraph. So uh, if I wanted to add space be, uh, after a paragraph, um, I could I could click add space after the paragraph and notice it moved this down. These are double spaced right now. And that's the reason they're they're so far apart, right? Um, but I've also now added space to the word hello. If I want to take away that space, I would remove the space uh, after the paragraph. You see how I tightened these up? So this is the paragraph I'm on hello. And if I wanted to add space after the paragraph, it would be between hello and goodbye. I was a little confusing when I said that. Sorry about that. But anyway, you can add space before and after. Uh, I don't usually do that. I usually just press enter twice and that puts space before or after. But some people like to um, have them all look uniform and just do it this way. Okay. All right. So that is uh, inserting. Um, that is how you do the spacing. One last thing I want to kind of talk about is if you go up here to the file menu, 
you'll see a lot of different things. There's download. So if you want to download this as a PDF document to your computer or a Word document, you can do it here. You can look at the version history so you can go back in time. Uh, you can also um, uh, do the page setup. And that's where I want to go right now. This is page setup. You can change it from portrait to landscape. So landscape, it would be wider, but not as tall. And portrait, of course, is um, not as wide, but taller. You can also, uh, you can apply that to the whole document or to selected content, but I've it'll, normally it's just the whole document. Um, I can change the page color and other things as well. But I'm going to also show you, I don't, I don't like big margins. It just wastes space on the screen, and I'm not printing this out usually. So sometimes I'll change this to by 0.25 for the top and 0.25 for the bottom. And uh, this is a quarter inch, right? 0 0.25, whoop, 0.25 for the left margin and maybe 0.25 for the right margin. I'm going to click OK. And actually, I've got my, and see, notice how it's just a half an inch. And so it doesn't take up as much room. Also, when I'm using this on, a, on the computer, I don't care about all this extra space. It's just on a small screen, especially like a, a, a phone, it just wastes space. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to the view menu. Instead of print layout, I'll uncheck that. And notice how you can't even see the margins and so forth. It doesn't, it doesn't, it just kind of runs together. You don't see the, look at the difference. I'll show it to you again. You can see the margins, but you just have more, more room in between. You don't really need that. So I'll a lot of times just go to view and I'll do uh, take out the print layout. All right, so I think those are the main things. Remember, you don't have to save this. This is already being saved back into uh, Google Drive. Um, so uh, that's all you really need to do. So I hope that's a good overview of how you would edit a document.